bloodlust and run away. <laughs> Can't do that when you're stunned. Well, oh, ban out the anti mage here. It's the, it's the last last pick for for now. Last ban for Navi, I should say. Secret now. What's it gonna be for Kuro? Maybe anti mage. I don't know. They need someone with. Well, anti mage was just banned. Oh, it was. Okay, well, never mind. Terrible. Just it's kidding. just been ignored. Uh, he was nerfed in 6.82c, but Eternal Envy played a really good Terrorblade yesterday. Something you consider. I suppose against the Knicks, it's a little bit more dangerous to be playing like these split pushing style of carries. Well, they have the Keeper, though. So that's what All they right. like to run. Well, I'm gonna go for the Terrorblade. A last pick? pick. Not. Yeah. Well, we'll find out if it's gonna work, but... Navi, not so easy to out late game secret anymore. Up until this point, they clearly had it if it went late enough, but now, not obviously theirs. They also don't have that great of spells to deal with the illusions, Death Prophet, Crypt Swarm being the only spammable long range one. But at the same time, Terrible Blade, his illusions take a lot more damage remaining. in the recent patch. Actually, not a lot more, just some more. Five sec five seconds. So we'll see remaining. how that affects him. Decent partner with Bloodlust. Please yeah, to be exact, time. the images went from taking 300% damage to 425, so it's, uh, it's like a 38% or something, maybe 40% increase. Decent amount more, but they were already taking a lot of damage. Still not enough to push them out of... Yeah, they don't have AoE. That's the one thing Bane and Nyx don't give you at all, is D-push or AoE. And Bristles, later on, is the quills are just going to take too long to be of any use. Pick for Navi. Rubik, maybe? I think I would like Rubik here. Good AoE, some good spells to steal. They need, like, some extra disable to. Okay, versus Terrorblade. Elder Titan. So it's gonna be, uh, offlane Elder Titan and the support Nyx. One of the reasons why I don't like support Nyx is just because he has a really hard time finding levels, and his level 1 stun is really, really poor. So. He's not good at zoning, not really. Yeah. Mob, you can like go mid, sometimes throw a few mana burns out, but that that's not too effective nowadays with the double rune spawn and still the ability to battle crow. Yeah, I would say that FNG is the hero that I'm watching in the first 10 minutes to see if it develops in Navi's way. If he gets far behind, it's just going to be really difficult to deal with, deal with Terrorblade in the rest of Secret's lineup. Where's Funic might have his work cut out for him. You you fire blast him, you you uh you use the slow from Terrorblade, and you start right-clicking in Metamorphosis? They could aggro try it, though. He's gonna take a lot of damage. I think aggro try might Nobby. be a better option for secret. Nobby. Nyx, Bane, Bristle? I think it's just, it's just a better idea to limit the Terrorblade than tra trade farm. Because you're trading a Bristleback farm for a Terrorblade. Um, Bristleback is an offline hero for a reason. He does well without that much farm. So I think if you keep a Bristle under farm as well as a Terrorblade under farm, then secret's in a uh, much more precarious situation than before. But if you pair versus Elder Titan, what can Elder Titan do besides die or Especially not get die or offline. Yeah, the creeps come a little close to the tower in this patch, but he's still going to get zoned pretty hard. Well, we'll find out, Ben. We're underway now. Navi versus Secret. The, one of the, not the first showdown between these teams, but one of the few since the roster swaps. Got FNG on your next assassin, Funic. The Elder Titan. Vankscore will be playing the Bane. They make a jaunt towards the Roche Pit. Dendi going solo mid on who else than the Death Prophet. And that does leave Havos on the safe lane. Bristle, meanwhile, for Secret. A hodgepodge of old teams, but now looking like a well-oiled machine. S4, your Brewmaster. Looks like he'll be taking the mid lane. Simba will be playing the Timber Saw, or formerly Fly, going to the off lane, to most likely. Big Daddy No Tail will be on the Ogre Magi. That puts Puppy onto the Keeper of the Light. And Kuroki who's been an absolute beast since joining Secret and going back to his old role as a carry on the, the safe lane Terrorblade. This is a cool play from Navi. I have not seen this before. Drop those reward outside the pit. Wait inside the pit for someone to get the bounty room. So, Big Daddy, is he going to die? He has... He's like an Ogre Magi. It's like, eh, you know, I can... Well, they have... Can strut up here. They have a good... Uh, actually, they don't really... Thanks, Gore walks down. They do see Big Daddy gets up the stun first. Those reactions. Jeez. So good. Indeed. I thought they were going to wait for him to be a little bit closer to the rune, but... Yeah, they did reveal themselves, but... I'm not sure if they get the kill there anyway, but they definitely do a lot of damage. Instead, it's just one nuke for him. Yeah, well, and they will put Funnick in the off lane, and I mean, that just makes it really easy. No-Tail can zone him out on his own, especially with boots first. Even with the stout shield on Funnick, I don't think it's enough, and they have him reserve reward out in the time. 
Man, already he's gonna start clubbing him. Give him the smack for now with the the six pace armor. You really can't trade blows too easily with this here. Phonix just wants to get off that one spirit, at least get some creeps, but he'll have to turn tail and run. Middle lane, we're gonna see a brewmaster versus a death prophet, so just pretty much your your classic farming mid lane matchup. And they are gonna be giving away free farm to the enemy Terrorblade. We saw this end very poorly for Cloud9's opponents yesterday. See if, if Navi have any better luck this time around. They also don't have a good lockdown to kill the timber uh, saw too. They have what, sleep into an impale with maybe goo to catch? Avos has already skilled goo at level 2, but I don't know. I don't see uh, Maybe the carapace, timber but like early on, he's not even going to have the levels for that. FNG hasn't even skilled anything yet. Carapace when he tries to chain out. Not bad. See a wraparound from Big Daddy. Going in for the kill on Dendi, or maybe he's trying to snipe the bottle. They know that he's there, though. Hmm. Dendi, unfortunately for Secret, Dendi's not farming the bottle that quickly, because he's gone for the early null talisman, picked up the branches as well. So no tail kind of ambles back towards bottom, mostly looking for his two-minute two minute rune at this point. He'll come and lob a stun, just make sure Funnick gets right, right back to the tower. The real dance will be top lane. S4 moving into position. Bentsport can sleep him here. Simba's also ready. It's going to be an illusion rune. Do they try and make a play here on S4? FNG only level 2. Not going to bother. Close to being able to get a kill there with Dendi also coming in, but not going to happen. Hobo's getting ridiculously good farm in the safe lane. 15 creeps as opposed to Kuro's 10. And funny, finally getting some experience at the tower 2. We'll hit level 3 off of this. So how do you like the trades overall? Slightly better farm for for Navi, but you are not killing the Dome Timber so off lane, uh, fairly greedy off lane, and Bonic actually doing pretty well early on in his own. Do you, do you think the trades are good enough here for Navi? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think Navi's having a better early game than I expected, although FNG is still suffering in uh, levels compared to, let's say, Keeper Light, who's almost level 3 and has a stack to work with. So the lanes might be okay, but the jungle is working out slightly in favor of Secret. Now, Puppy going for the double pull and is successful in that. He can go back and farm those tanks later. It's also something the Timber Saw or the Terrorblade can, can deal with pretty easily later on. But think about a sleep here on Simba. Problem is, after that sleep, it's sleep into what? Mid lane S4 almost got killed off by Dendi solo. Don't really see what happened there, but just took a lot of harassment from the Death Prophet. Out of mana for the finishing blow. Doesn't want to leave the slain. Bottle is going back for Dendi. Rune yet to spawn, so he knows there's no mana. And his own bottle will return. So boots in your bottle up. Still falling a bit behind the, the death prop, as you would expect, but not too far off. Yeah, he also had that brief excursion to the top rune, which uh, definitely hurts him a little bit. But at the same time, Dendi won't have boots for a little bit, so S4 can play aggressively if he so yeah. desires. They're bringing in Big Daddy again, but... Of course, this Observer Ward that, that gave them vision of that Ogre Magi... Moving towards the bottom rune. Also spots the rotation. No smoke for him. Sonic being slightly harassed. He Simba like on top of these supports and like, oh man, they might be killing him. Better check, but not even taking damage. Everybody's pretty much getting what they want out of their lanes. Oh, bottom lane, not Funic. Throws out the Astro, but he's being first pursued blood. out by Big Daddy. The first blood will go the way of the Ogre. That's what I meant with the, the reflection. The thought they're gonna try and make a go at the same time on the Timber Do they have a mana burn yet? No, no points to that Carapace. FNG's gonna get in front, prevents the chain out. They may end up losing Fly, they will. Well, that is the one solution, is just get in front of the chain and, and Carapace it. Prevent that retreat. Nicely done. I spike Carapace indeed. A pretty good gold swing for uh, Actually, it's saying Navi coming out on top. Well, Secret, Secret gets the first blood. They're going to get the tower, too. Yeah, so definitely won't be after this. Funic caught out by the Ogre. He's trying to go blow for blow. Big Daddy dropping low here. Funic's going to club him down. Staples his face in. Take that, you dumb Ogre. As FNG retreats out with the Carapace. He's pretty low. He's got a single tango. Kuro's going to send an illusion in to hunt him, but FNG is ready for this, and he's just going to tango and feed out. The illusion will try to backstab him, but... Tower will be here to protect him anyway. The tower, in the end, will go the way of Kuroki. That is a very early tower takedown for the Terror Blade. Now up to a thousand gold. Pretty even start. But you do see Navi starting to pull a bit farther ahead in terms of farm. 33 CS on that Bristleback and still maintaining a solid lead for Dendi mid. Yep, Terror Blade though. I think Terror Blade is much scarier come 15 minutes with free farm. 
than Bristle. I mean, he does get what? Um, Crimson Guard early, I believe, on Bristleback. Maybe not every game, but we shall see. Brewmaster 2 really needs to work on his Blue Dagger. 9 CS behind Dendi. I don't have a little skirmish for the top for now. Big Daddy popping his heads out, but Thanks Score is waiting for him here. If they bring in reinforcements, they will. A lot of emphasis on securing these runes. S4 marching down to the river. Interesting build from No Tail. He's gone for the 1 1 1. We've seen some players just max fire blast and ignite, skip points in bloodlust. We've seen others prioritize bloodlust. Uh, one, we, one, saw one. The, we saw the ignite max. 1 1 1 is the, I think, the best build. There are um, both the ignite and bloodlust are really good value points. I think uh, 4 1 1 after that is generally better. Two. Okay. Yeah, we've, it's interesting because we've just seen like. It's one of those heroes that's only recently been used a lot in competitive. We, occasionally we'd see like a lone druid ogre to bloodlust the bear, but for the most part, this hero is kind of unexplored territory. Relatively unexplored. Just get multis, man. <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, that's easier said than done for some. It just depends on when you want the hero's strength. If you want like Max Ignite, he's really strong from like 1 through 9, but then he really tapers off later. But supports you're not really worried about, you know, having too much strength in the early game or not enough strength in the early game rather you're worried about them falling off later so you want him to be relevant for as long as possible which this, is where max fire blast comes in this timber saw is struggling in the off lane honestly i i would have expected fly to do a bit better but he's or simba rather he's had a tough time of it only level four. well the supports haven't been concentrating on stacking and pulling though they've just been almost 100 percent just focused on killing and uh simba and protecting the rune yeah, the only hero on Navi supports that has been, or on secret supports that's been getting the extra farm is is the Keeper of the Light. The Ogre for No Tail is actually the, the lowest in terms of level progression. Oh, bring in the big daddy. That early tower he has managed to secure his arcane boots. Can't get a range for anything. He knows that there's him several. And while that's there. happening, top lane. Do they have a grip yet? Nope. Well, they're gonna stick up the goo in the auto attacks and fly. Should be able to tell change of safety. No, he can't! Oh man, those quills really added up. I, I did not expect him to go down there, but he just doesn't have the level 3 chain and wasn't able... Actually, he's gone for two points of reactive. Yeah, I think... Yeah, it's a very short range chain. Level 2 chain is slightly better in this situation than reactive. And they knew they had they had him as a reward because Ogre tried to wrap around and Denny backed off before he would have been able to see them during nighttime. So Puppy should know that there's a ward here. And they actually just got a observer ward dewarded here too. So Secret not actually going to have an easy mid game at all. Yeah, well, and good news... Their Tire Blade's still been left relatively unchecked. Kuroki has gone for that, just the very cost-efficient build so that your illusions can maximize their time in the jungle, the Quelling Blade, the Akila, the Treads. Uh-oh, Funic might be wrapping around for a kill here on Kuro. I don't know if that's... I don't think that's a wise idea. He's just going to get sundered if he doesn't burst him down immediately. Oh, he sundered an illusion. Okay. Was it an illusion? Yeah. Okay. I think it was. Or was it a puppy? Was it, He's pretty was it puppy? Oh, okay. I didn't see puppy. I didn't actually see him use the sunder. I don't think you can use it on illusion. I don't know what I'm talking about. I was just clicking on him. I saw his cooldown go down. Well, that's a free fountain trip for him. Puppy's going to bite the bullet there, but... Yeah, with that low HP pool, a tango is like a third of your health anyway. Uh, a little bit less than that. No, it's not going to get scouted out here. <laughs> Gets clubbed once by Funic. Trying to zone him back a bit. Goes for the, the rotation around, but not successful in the end. Both teams content to sit back and farm. So we'll check our item progression here for Navi. The Vanguard up for a vote, so Crimson most likely coming soon. Dendi. The Null Talisman and Phase Boots. Do you have anything on the Courier? Not yet. Generally, it's either your Drums or your straight Yule Scepter from here. Outside of that, the only thing I worry about in their mid game is they have no real way to initiate. Stomp, not even skilled yet. No Vendetta, FNG's not even close to level 6, Vanguard nowhere near his own grip. Ganking for this team is not that easy. It is not. So they just be deathballing towers? You're up against Cobble? Yes, they should be. I mean, they have the Nyx assassin. Maybe once they get 6 with Nyx, they can try a very aggressive sneak around play and just assassinate the Keeper Light. Um, but at the same time, they have to deal with Panda Ultimate too. So Panda Ultimate is a really big problem, and that's where you need the Bane to be level 6. But the supports on Navi, they traded off their levels for Simba's levels too. So the time that they can actually 5 minute group up is still going to be some time to come. Unless they get an easy kill on bottom with these double smoke, but... I don't know. Only Terrorblade would die to that, but he is 
well into the jungle. Meanwhile, Gandalf surges in. He's going to blind in Light Havos back, who now takes the chain. They're going to blow a split here as well. Big commitment to kill off the Bristle. And can they even do it? The Quill start to stack up. He's going to continue to pursue him out, throwing him up in the air with the Cyclone, back down to Earth. Havos still very tanky at 10 more stick charges. Not able to get them off simultaneously. Kuro, can they catch him? Can they get off that initial sleep? No, they sleep the illusion. Oh, that's not the right one. The thwarted in their efforts. This will open up the mid lane for Denny, though. I don't even know. I don't even know if they get that kill, though. If he sleeps the right one, he just wakes it up with an illusion, too, and then just runs away. So it's still very low probability. Maybe game. if you sleep him, sap. Well, then, then you want to brain sap, though. Sap to kill the illusion. Yeah, that would be tough. So apparently you can sunder illusions. I did not know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw that the other day. Well. They need to protect the stack, Radiant's though. Well, I guess it's almost, almost a dead stack, but Puppy was working on it earlier. I will say this Elder Titan is giving a hard time to Kuroki. He's farming well and using Sunder to stay Radiant's in the jungle, but you can see how powerful that Elder Titan is against um, a, a fairly squishy Terrorblade at this stage of the game. But Yasha's now up for Kuro. He is just completely free farming. Now yeah. the leader in CS, he's been very efficient in the woods. He hasn't. There's been the one gank attempt on him, which a tough one without Vendetta or, or level 6 on Bane. Elder Titan might actually be very good versus Terrorblade. Looking at Terrorblade, he has 14 armor. Well, actually 50 once yeah, he's pushed back. Really good against him. Yeah, and 700 HP with like 3 armor to a Bristleback and a Death Prophet, he's just going to get melted. Yeah, the Chinese teams have been exper- when they give away Terrorblade, they, they normally do either pick or ban Elder Titan, depending on what, what team they're on. So go for a sleep top lane and let's see if Avos can start stacking up that goo. Through number one, but it's now a level three chain, so the range is a lot greater. Kills on fly aren't so easy to come by. They bring in Dendi as well. Really getting close. It's just a little awkward draft wise for Navi because so much of their play lately has been this like five to twenty minute mark aggression. And they just don't have a, a heroes with levels to make it happen. There's no blink initiator with a stun, there's no level six on either support. It's very hard to have that game plan though versus uh, Brewmaster. That's true. Like five to twenty minutes is just where Brewmaster just wrecks people. You, you see, they they, they want to do something. You know, Dendi kind of ambles towards top. The supports have been smoking, but they just don't. They can't find like an easy clean opening. Frustration for Navi in some ways. Gold now tipping the way of secret slightly, very even. Experience also their direction. Have still that one tower advantage. Death profit in this game, but. I've yet to crack a tier one. And it will be a Crimson Guard rush for Bristle, or for Bristle. Very good versus Brewmaster. And actually illusions in general. Yeah, still, I mean, heroes will hit for, what, probably around 200? With the, uh... The main hero, yeah. With the main hero, and Crimson Guard only blocks 50. And it definitely isn't a great... It's definitely not going to be good enough late game, that's for damn sure. But... For the mid game, it might give Navi that that push over the top that they need. It gives them a lot of armor too, which is very very important. The other nice thing with Bristle, no mana cost. That's that's a bit of an issue. If the mech build not so common lately, just because the increased mana cost in 6.82, they're starting to group here. Will they be pushing. What do you think? Is this their time? Looks like it's there. Though. Yeah, they have Chakram as well as uh, Keeper Illuminate to deal with it, though. They have to, like, catch him by surprise, though. They can't just, like, hey, we're going to group up at our T1 and then slowly push towards their T1. That's just way too much time for Seeker to react. So, ideally, they'd go in with, like, a Vendetta at FNG behind and just pick off any stragglers and then transition that into a tower push. Ideally, Panda, but... They're going to try not. for it anyway, Ben. Exorcism pop. Very far back, though, is Bendy. He does not want to get caught out here. Glyph, not available. They're going to lose this tier 1 for sure. Is there even a deny attempt? No attempted. Or not attempted. Secret not really trading directly, but just kind of waiting this one out. That's still really good for them. Only one tower down in 15 minutes versus Death Prophet, who had a relatively easy time in mid due to no supports coming. That's they get off the good. Vendetta initiation, they smash the stun Simba, but they gotta get in front of him with that follow-up Carapace to actually get a kill, and that's not gonna happen. Good cap and Carapace, the Brewmaster clap, still Chakram coming through, Crimson Guard not gonna save you from that. As Vanksgore heads to the right, he'll be cycloned and dealt with. Do they go for a vote as well? No. They're just gonna take the Bane as their prize. A two for nil. Though they did lose a tower, and it did cost them a Bruce split. I think Vanscore actually messed that fight up really badly for them. They had the very nice Carapace post-clap, uh, 
from Brewmaster, which gives them like an extra, what, quarter of a second or three quarters of a second to react to the split, and he didn't grip them. And they had already used a Fire Blast too, so. Dandy, this is a struggle for him. That extra Fire Blast comes through, Illuminate off the mark, not gonna matter. S4 finds another kill, Kuro barely able to survive. Maybe just sunder a teammate. Yeah, go back to well. He says, I got better things to do, like farm. Avost will find a trade and Puppy retreating out. But that is a Keeper of the Light for Death Prophet. And still, the free farm mounts. Kuro, he's got his Manta. It's a 16-minute Manta Aquila Treads. He purchases it. We'll go for it immediately. S4 being pursued at mid lane. We've got two goos up. It's done cooling down. FNG trying to maybe carapace clap. Oh, they're taking ultimate. Let's come through. Now they'll grip Simba, though. And... He gets held in position. This is the much easier kill. They're gonna club him down. Nice turn there for Navi. Makes it a two for one, but do they take a tower on the back of it is the question. Because if they don't, well, Kuro, Manta out, still free farming now. Talc and gold lead or so. And you might see a round two of this engagement. FNG in position, Havost in the front lines. He has his Crimson Guard ready. Not popping just yet, goes for the stun, gets it on two. Nicely done by FNG. They need follow up here to bring down S4. Will the evasion procs be with them? They're not. Kuro now splitting and trying to engage. Doesn't have a Sunder. He's going to pay with his life. FNG barely falling to that last auto attack from a creep, I think it was. Puppy getting credit for the kill, though. Man, the tower drops mid. Suddenly, Navi getting aggressive with great success. The Crimson Guard is just ridiculously strong at this point in the game. So fast. Yeah, I mean... Havos went for being 800, 900 gold down, just want to mention, and now he's 600 up. It's like a 1500 gold swing in terms of catch up with that Terra Blade, and overall... 2,000 plus gold swing in favor of Navi. Yeah, generally when I see Crimson Guard, it's like 25 minutes and onwards. It's usually gotten, but if you rush it with Bristleback and this early, it's just, it's incredibly Man. effective. Yeah, he's been, been beefing up. And if us not fix up the Sanj. So we might just see a Halberd rush for him. That is, that's a pretty potent item, just have an against Starblade, who generally doesn't build MKB, and if he does, it's not early. Sanj and Yasha, man. I feel Could it. Be. You say that like the Chinese alchemists, so they play kind of similar. We'll have an engagement mid lane. Blink clap is there. FNG did pop Vendetta. Can he turn this one around in any way? A little bit of. Well, they're going to go back for Dendi. They'd rather try to kill off the Death Prophet. Surrounding him, but the Impale comes through, nearly finishing off the Timbersaw with the Brain Sap. They'll secure that kill. Another death for Fly. They continue to mount. Dendi's still alive. They'll need another Boulder Toss. They don't get it in time. Blink Clap. And the crits there. S4 does it the hard way alone. FNG with another Impale, but the multicast from Big Daddy will secure that one. Another death for Dendi as well. Both of these here are struggling. And this is without Curl. He's off in the top lane. Doing that, that terrible thing. Dyer's He's gonna take a tower. That will not be contested. I like how Secret doesn't fortified. play passively once they have the Aegis. But that's what most teams would do. Like, oh crap, they have the Aegis, and then they would just wait for Navi's ultimate to be up and then push another tower. But instead, Dyer's they strike immediately on the offensive with S4 using his primal split because they know that Death Prophet probably used exorcism for it. So they immediately go on there, and I mean, he could have also blinked out, and it wouldn't have been that bad of a fight for them. But instead, he blinks in and gets two more kills on the Nyx and the Death Prophet. So they're just pushing Navi. It's like, hey, we know you guys are ahead, but you're gonna have to work to keep that lead. Yeah, we also yeah we also know that you're as you mentioned, the exorcism's down, and your ability to fight is fairly limited. By the way, what what are your thoughts on this Midas on the Elder Titan? He went for it pretty early, and it's starting to add up now. He's up to two K gold. Do you think it's a Midas game? Well, it depends on when Navi think they can end the game. And if they don't think they can push high ground by like 35, then it's probably better for him to get a Midas. And they don't have any other Midases on their team. Um, so I think it's okay. The one thing we've seen a lot of lately with Elder Titans is actually the Ags the, for the additional disarm. It, that ult's so hard to hit though. Yeah. Like, I Unless think, you get a really good impale on FMG. I think you're generally better working towards his strength, which is natural order, and further augmenting the damage with either a Veil, depending on your lineup, or an AC, or a Shiva's, I generally think is uh, the better way to build him. But I think in sp some specific scenarios, AC, or Ags's rather, is better. We also occasionally will see a Hex, just to, Hex is really if there's good a too. hard to lock down hero, which 
Parablade, not that hard to lock down, but very important to lock down. You do not want him to sunder. I mean, he can even get a Dagon. Dagon would be pretty good at just straight up killing Terrorblade because he's going to be their biggest problem as well as Panda, and Magic Burst is very, very good versus them, so I wouldn't be opposed to that. S4 pings out Dendi, but Dendi's going to move in. The other direction, he walks straight on in, throws the Terrorblade up in the air. Banksker also moving forward, but there's four Navi here waiting. Now Havos is in the front lines racing on S4. Just a solitary goo to start this. To keep the aggression flowing. Don't want to let any sort of defense be mounted here by Secret. They'll have a, a Blast coming in. Puppy will prepare to unload and illuminate. We'll throw it. Havos turning his back to the illuminate. Hardly even taking damage from that. Jesus, he's tanky. Now takes an Ogre stun as well. Still doing work to this tower. And it's Timbersaw pushing on the side lane. Not... The Terrorblade, who would do it much quicker. Abos finally dropping low in this fight. His escort jumped in, but he got gripped. He wasn't able to get off his ultimate. Might have been a Dendi Sans there to boot. Kuro still trying to duke it out, though. They're going to lose the Bristle one. Did they lose him a second time? Funic dropping quickly. And now Phobos gets aggressive. Earth Splitter there immediately popping that Sunder. Phobos has driven off the fight. What looked to be an awesome initiation. There was no Bruce split there. Still somewhat falls apart. They'll chase on the bank score. Kuroki in pursuit. Two or three more auto attacks will do it. He doesn't have br brain set mod. He's got a stick. Can't use it in time. They end up dropping three in the end. A three for one exchange, but the tower does go Navi's way. The power of the tier boy. Well, I think Timbersaw got the tier one bottom, and they're not done yet. They're out here on Denny. No exorcism. They have to start Kuro. No Sunder. They might actually get this kill. They really need to shut him down. The blinding light almost perfectly placed by Puppy as Navi. Carapace is there. I can't retreat out, but this is the real kill. They got to find Kuroki. He's got a teleport ready. Impale's also available. They're going to goo. He tries to man to touch that. It was just delivered recently. Impale, not enough. S4 comes in too late with the split. Crimson Guard coin down at five. Without that, Havos probably going down here. Illuminate comes through. FNG has an impale in a few. They're going to cyclone him up, drop him back down. Chakram will uh, greet him. They even bought back. Remember, these buybacks have much longer cooldowns than the latest patch. That's seven minutes with no buyback for Fly, but nonetheless, gets the kill on Havos. Definitely worth it for that. As Bankscore also pursued out right back the other way into a multicast. My goodness. Secret. Like you said, they're just, they're never afraid. They lose a fight, they'll buy back, they'll fight you again. Relentless from both teams. They really wanted to get that mid-T1 tower, and it looks like they will actually not transition into that. And Kiro still really, really strong. He managed to buy an ultimate orb before he died, so he didn't actually lose any gold. And his, I mean, his net worth is just mounting and mounting, but not compared to Havos sitting at a pretty 11,400. Yeah, of course, if this goes late enough, uh, it's going to be tough for Havos to do alone. Fonic is going to find a solo kill on Puppy, though, it looks like. Earth splitters him, drops him back. Blinding Light will be there. He's got to teleport out immediately. Impale from long range. Captain Puppy going down with his ship. Now he will, will punish him. Without that, um, without that Sunder on Terribly, though, they would have lost the fight miserably That's due true. to the excellent Fiend's grip by Manscore. And it's may, it might be a little bit greedy going in for a blink clap and primal split, but he got away with it last time, so he thought he could get away with it again. Um, but the silence just came out a tad bit late on the Terra Blade, and there, there goes the majority of the tank. That was like 1,500 HP lost immediately on the boost. Yeah, uh, he, maybe he needs some magic resistance. Well, I mean, the, the Sunder, just, he, they just can't let the Sunder get off. Yeah, that's true. Mavos for now is going to... And actually, there's still a lot of... There's also the Timber Saw, which is going to give him problems as this game goes on. For now, Fly is pretty poor. He will pop his ultimate. Bottom lane, Navi looking to push in. Wrap around. Maybe a bit of a premature ult. They're going to lose a tower on top, too. So, at worst, it's a 1 for 1 if they keep on going for Navi. There's like no Glyph for the Dire. There is no Glyph for the Radiant, either. But Demi's ult was almost entirely right wasted. That was an illusion for the Brew, just cutting the wave and... The time these creeps come in, the tower's hardly taking any damage. This is an awful trade for Navi. I mean, it's not a trade at all. And while they try to TP out, they may get caught. FNG, mono leaked. They're going to brew split for this. It's a pretty big investment for the support Nyx, but they brought in Curl. Perhaps they try to transition into something else. The tier one mid. Funic. Maybe you can look for Roche. The Cyclone searching for Funic. It's going to find him. S4 with Fantastic Dyer's Micro. As the Skywalking mind. Spirit of the other Titan rejoins him. He tries to stop. That ain't going to happen either. Three times multicast for Big Daddy. Another kill here for Secret. Making the slightly better decisions in these. When to push, when to trade, when to fight. They now have the Terrorblade on top. I think it's the first time, that, well, not the first time, but the, the second time this game is on top, and time might be for a long time. 
Take the tier 2 bottom. Mid tower is pretty much a goner at this point. About to be a lot of additional gold into Kuro's pockets. He may have a Scotty in the next three minutes. Yeah, and if they get an Aegis on top of that, Navi is going to have a really difficult time um, defending against that because Navi's strength is is this time. It's like the 15 to 35 when Crimson Guard and Exorcism is really, really strong relative to everything else. And slowly but surely, it's going to fall off, especially with Terrorblade's ridiculous farm. And the more farm he gets, the shorter their window is. On pause for back underway after a very quick attack. break. Gonna push in all the way. They'll just send the illusions to cut the wave. Creeps are not with them. Okay, I guess they won't get the tier 2 bottom just yet. Didn't have creep support. They were trying to push it in, but realizing they need to back off. Now they're gonna rotate mid for the tier 1, perhaps. It just, honestly, they could just siege that with terribly illusions. They don't have to commit anything to kill it. Now, if you will have a glyph ready, a couple of minutes, but. Well, actually one minute, but that, that'll probably be too long. Well, they also have the recall with Kuro, which is kind of cool, because usually Terrorblade's like, well, I either have to split push or I can join the fight. He can't do both. But with recall, he can do both. Yeah, so as I have Scotty already. I, I thought he needed a few more components, but some of it was already on the courier. That's he, a 25-minute I have Scotty. He has a really good uh, he does a really good job of gold management and just buying out before he dies, which, I mean, it's, it seems easy, but it's actually not that easy. Yeah, making sure you don't player. lose any unreliable gold as well. Kuro has, has done a nice job of it. Got two deaths this game. But this is that point where Terrorblade starts to pull ahead, and if it goes late, Navi... Decent AoE if Elder Titan hits his ultimate, but that's not something you can count on. And it seems Funic isn't going for the Ags after all. He will go for a Hex now, picks up the Void Stone, ultimate orb. So, they will have some additional lockdown, not just for the Tire Blade, also for the Timber Saw will be nice. But, I mean, you're looking at, <laughs> you're looking at even the Ogre Magi now coming online. No Tail gets the level 2 ult. He can start playing the lotto here with that Aghanim set. I don't know how he transitioned that smoothly. He was the support that was walking around, trying to kill the DP, checking runes, and not getting any stacks. And he transitioned very nicely from that broke position 5 to a very uh, nice Ags wielding position 4. Yeah, his CS is pretty abysmal. 25. He's The Bane and, and Nyx, as much as they roam, were actually ahead of him. But he's, uh, he's 4, 2, and 7. And the Tower Gold is also starting to pad in. Dyer's now he can become even more of a, a threat. Well, he just hasn't hasn't died very well. Yeah, Dyer's four, two, and seven. That'll do it. Dire supports, yeah, one and five on the Nyx, three and three on the Bane. Every time Navi goes for a tower, oh, Kuroki's right there to trade another one with it. So he gets top, they get bottom, and it's, it's just how ridiculous never blood, this bloodlusted main hero is. Oh my goodness. No tails, goner. They oh, actually, they recall. Oh my goodness. Jeebus. They're going to look to fight this one. The reinforcements are coming in for Secret, and Dendi caught out instantly. Where's the backup? Navi too slow to fight. Alhavos does the charging on his own. The Boulder Toss greets the Bristle, gets multicasted as well. Cyclone ready. Will be used on the Bane to keep Havost isolated, but they're just buying time for Kuro top lane more than anything. He's about to begin cracking the base. Another multicast. Ding, ding, ding. As they'll lose Havos, most likely he's still alive for the time being. One more nuke will do him in. Brewmaster blink and clap, that secures the kill. Two cores, the two lead farmers down now for Navi. And bank score turns, goes for the fly kill, can't quite get it. 40 HP after the stick charge, is barely surviving with reactive armor. Navi lose three, they get nothing. And that was without Kuro really involved in the fight at all. He's going to continue using Sunder to maintain the push. And now they're up to about 2,800 gold swing their way. Lead begins to mount. The bloodlusted 300 damage per auto attack ranged terribly from going to work. Their mobility is just ridiculous with recall. There were like two heroes top. They're like, oh, okay, we see a solo ogre. I mean, that's an easy kill. Goes in for the Yules, doesn't have it when they burst him down because immediately four people are on top of him. Now the Earth Splitter on S4. It's not going to connect on anything. And going back to what you mentioned, they, they don't have much setup. It's just a Nyx and Pale. And that's not too easy to land without a Blink Dagger. Navi's starting to fall off a bit, it feels. A lot of their items are very mid-game centric. It's a Crimson Guard into a Sanj and Yasha into a BKB. Nothing, no Assault Kuras picked up yet for the team. Dendi has gone for your Yules and the Shivas, but 
Still a long way off from like your six slotted Death Prophet status. And he only has 1200 HP. If he gets multicasted or Timber Saw Burst or keep the light illuminated, he's just going to drop like a rock. So what Navi really needs to do is secure Roshan more so so terribly can't get it rather than uh, utilizing it for themselves, although it is not a nice pickup for her both. But giving an Aegis to terribly at this point in the game is almost game over. Well, after what was a 2,500 gold lead, it swung 7,500 in total, giving Secret a, a substantial advantage. Actually, a bit more than that, more like 8,500. They now lead by a lot. They're free farming on their Terror Blade. The Timber Saw is completed with Bloodstone, your Ogre Magi. Not only the Agative Scepter, but now can buy all the can go back to buying all the wards and smokes for the team. This gives Puppy room to pick up a four step and 2,000 gold. Everyone's staying relevant here on Secret, whereas some of these Navi heroes, like Bank Score, 4,200 health, or, uh, sorry, 4,200 net worth. He's starting to fall off. FNG, still no blink or force at 30 minutes on a support mix. Just not very relevant, it feels. And Secret can have another BKB um, on Panda if they want, but they already have one on Terrorblade, too. So, sitting at a very pretty, probably 2,200 HP post BKB. Gonna rotate Avostin. Has picked up a BKB of his own, but the difference is there's just a lot of right click damage from that Terror Blade now, especially with Bloodlust. We'll see how effective his BKB is. He gets Monolith. He may have to pop it. He's already lost all his mana anyway. He just stands and tries to fight against Croak. He gets stunned by the Monolith. And while that's happening, they jump in on the backside. Finish off Vanscore with the Bruce Split. The big lockdown for the Terror Blade is out of the picture. And Havod starts getting shredded. The slice and dice is in. As Kuroki will bring him down once. There is a round two here. He's saving the BKB for that. But now Terror Blade morphs bigger and gets stronger. And he gets pounding into the Bristleback. It's stomped. Can they get an Earth Splitter off? They're going to need a good one from Funic. Let's it fly. Impales there to hold Kuro in position. He gets hexed as well. They got to finish him off before that Sunder. Four stepped away towards safety. He gets it off. Oh no. Now you probably got to run. That's tough at all. Doing good damage though. This may be enough to turn the fight. Navi using that second life to good effect. Puppy in danger. No tail in danger. But it's still for the time being. The Terror Blade standing strong. Exorcism wearing off. Very soon. Yules is there. Dendi's ghost got to return in time. Nearly dies. Able to survive. And Kuroki also living by a prayer. Just a shred of HP. What a crazy fight. Not done just yet. FN. Uh, okay, we're done now. No Blink Dagger on him. They're going to try and chase. But well, they'll need a Yules. And meanwhile, Simba is chaining all the way out. Kuroki. Sending an illusion. He's trying to bait with this, but Navi are not going to fall for that one. And he's just sticking around for a while, man. Very confident that he'll get off this next Sunder. Both All right. I guess he'll be alive in the end. Both teams know the key to the fight is Terror Blade. They almost bursted him down a sight of Vice. A very crucial four staff by Puppy saved him right there. And then the timely BKB into the Sunder. If he gets Sunder off, Navi isn't going to win a fight, and that was with the Aegis, and it's a 2 for 2 uh, so yeah, Navi's timeline is running out very, very soon unless they can work out some very well-coordinated bursts onto old Kiroki there. Yeah, and that's like pretty much perfect chain stun for yes. Navi as well. They, the only thing they didn't get was a long-duration grip, but you can't count on that at this point. I mean, Vangscore is just going to get jumped by the Brew every fight. They're not going to let him grip, and I guess the only way that changes is with a BKB for him. Yeah, and he's just not going to be able to farm it. I doubt he'll get it before the uh, game ends. And Nick Assassin working on that 4 step. Eventually, he will get his. He's just a ring of regeneration away. And Ogre Magi also working on a 4 step. Got to save Kuro. Yeah, they know if Kuro lives and gets off Sunder with BKB, the fight's over. Or at the at the very best, Navi retreat. But they're not going to kill him from there. From there. What's their, what's their late game transition? Do they have anything or is it just hopeless? Well, I mean, Bristleback still does a lot of damage. You go like a Bristle Blade here and just try and, and he lock, needs, he needs lock down the Terror Blade. AC more than that. Oh, uh oh, caught out with Savost, and he tries to go toe to toe here with Curl. He does pop his BKB. Shiva's also used by Dendi. They exorcist him too. They barely managed to slow down Curl, but too much backup for him. Well, meanwhile, in the river. Fly is pursued out by Funic, but the entire gank train of Secret descends. Funic really chased that for a while. That first slow is here. He's got a hex ready. He's going to have to pop it. Uses the stomp as well. Dies before he can get it off. The Earth Splitter was dropped as well. Out of position. Honestly, like he saw the big skirmish here, and I guess he figured that Secret would back knowing Exorcism was used, but they just came around the other direction and went right back in. That's with Exorcism being deployed. Now it's on cooldown for two minutes. Well, they, they had just go high ground top lane.
I, I don't think so. It's not that time. They won't have uh, Metamorphosis up for the... Mm. Uh, I guess maybe they can. They could maybe... They, maybe they siege it a little bit, or, rather than, like, fully committing. And, actually, Death Prophet Ultimate was used. Yeah. It might actually be a really good time to push. Let's see. They're thinking about another Sunder to keep Puppy... Uh, keep Puppy low and keep Kuro healthy. The bromance continues to pay off here for Seeker. Oh, they're just marching bottom lane. They also have a, a Vlad and a... And an AC. That's such a good pickup versus Elder Titan. Even when he's alive, your team's still sitting on a very healthy 10 armor. Each. Navi now being pursued out. Bank score quickly falling here as the Brew split shuts him down. They can Cyclone and ignore the Brew. They're going to Rax or attempt to anyway. Buyback was used by Elder Titan. Gets the split on, or the stop rather, on the way out. But then what? Where are they? Where do they follow this one up? Our splitter not available for a full minute. Kuro is now in melee form. Still hits hard though. Bloodlust and he'll bring down the tower. Secret continuing to play aggressive as opposed to stun once more. Unable to do much in these fights. Constantly mono league, puppy. Four step up, down one cliff, up another. He's skating all over the map. FNG unable to get in range. Big Daddy retreating to the left. Kuro to the south. Recalled back to the base. Puppy did TP out. They're so good at protecting this terror blade. It's just, you know, like we see a lot of teams will pick like defensive supports like your Venge for the swap, or Abaddon for the shield, Omni Knight occasionally, but Navi, or, or Secret rather, just, they just heal him and and just relocate him with the four snap, the recall, they, they've done it, they figured out another way to keep him alive. And at the same time, they're doing a fantastic job of kiting Havos. Pop BKB, immediately everyone turns tail and run, runs, um, so they don't have to trade any cooldowns with that, and then they mana leak him when, he, when his BKB is down. What is the Bristol going to do, just stand there and spray? And he can't lose all his mana either. So yeah, what, yeah. Is he gonna BKB every time he gets mono leaked? <laughs> then, then they just slow him once with Terrible to walk away. And then on top of that, they can drunken haze him during the uh, when his BKB is down too. So they have to get a lot of mileage. At, when he pops his BKB, it's just not usually happening. I think he might have to uh, stagger his cooldowns too. You use Crimson Guard for one uh, defensive um, ability, and then BKB for another, not at the same time. Navi just haven't been able to keep up either. Just in terms of raw farm, your your death profit for Dendi is sitting at 13k net worth. He's two, three, and seven. It just the, it hasn't gotten the impact that he's searching for out of this hero. Like they when they by the time they tried to force towers, secret were trading, and often winning fights and getting tower trades. Yeah, I mean I don't really think he can do that much more though. It's mostly just Kuro pressuring everywhere, getting kills with Metamorphosis oh, killing Dendi. towers. He's in far here mid lane. The multicast brings him down to half. Or does have his ultimate, but he's waiting for the right opening. They're going to force out the Exorcism. Dendi will BKB as well. they got to commit to get some kills here. Terrorblade comes in from the rear. Dendi, no Yule Scepter ready. He's going to be slowed. No, actually, all those attacks missing pretty much. This curl. His own BKB going to wear off soon, but standing strong for the time being. Still has a Sunder even ready if he needs it. Havos now falling back. There's a, still an Earth Split already. They may have to drop it just to keep Pavost alive. Stomp? Will there be a stomp? Oh, Pavost keeping out. And while that was happening, they did lose Denny's Death Prophet. The Brewmaster Split secures that kill. Secret just overwhelming and outgunning Navi. Kuro's just not even threatened anymore. It's not really just the Terror Blade. It's the Timber Saw, the friggin' Ogre Magi's posting up on you, and they just can't punish it. And these four staffs, it's not just kiting the Bristle, it's kiting everyone. I mean, look at Terrorblade's being cut. Terrorblade's damage is ridiculous. With the Vlads and Bloodlust, I mean, these towers just melt. It's like the illusions are almost irrelevant. <laughs> the main hero is doing most of the work at this point. Especially with the Crimson Guard, but it's good enough. He's still, at the end of the day, an incredibly strong late game range right clicking carry, who's very difficult to lock down and bring down. The most pushed back by the Blinding Light. He's out of mana again. Puppy is completely shut down his former teammate in these fights. That mono leak is such a pain in the ass for a Bristleback. Yeah, and they even try and force staff him safely, and he just loses even more mana that way. Still, he is their front line, and... Well, Death Prophet does have a lot of armor and BKB, but still, no one can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kuro. Once he pops BKB and Metamorphosis and Manta, everyone just has to run. Rip on S4 mid, he does have a split in 10 seconds, not gonna get it off. Nice pick there for Na'Vi. Gem lost. It's a gem down too. I mean, you, you can't expect anything better than that, except maybe killing Kuro, but that's a, that's a much more difficult kill. Can they get the Roshan, though, to extend their lifeline? They have a buyback as well as a recall in 15 seconds. They're actually looking puppy. for more kills, though. With no gem, they know they can get aggressive here. They're going to walk up the... Oh, maybe they are just rushing. No, they're thinking about kills. 
This could be big for Na'Vi. Can FNG get off that multiple hero stun? Do they go for Kuroki? Who's the target here? Havost walking up fighting illusions. Well, FNG pursues other heroes. There's no force staff on Big Daddy. They impale from FNG. Oh, he clicked right behind where he force staffed. So it shot the wrong way. Made him look really bad, but that was probably just a matter of like a, a 50, 100 unit misclick. Big one, though. That was an opening for Na'Vi, and they did not take it. Did you say 1,500 unit misclick? No, no, 50 or... Oh, 50 or 100. I was like, 50. 1,500? I yeah, was like... Not a big misclick, man. <laughs> only like a screen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 50, 50 or 100. So this Russian will extend their lifeline a little bit, and I don't know. They could fight it. Is that 20% though? And no, too late. Yeah, but what do they do with the Aegis? That's, that's the concern here. They, they extend the game a little bit longer, and hopefully they get more opportunities to shut down the Terrorblade. The one thing the Secret did not seem to buy any sentries, but S4 blinks in, claps, and goes directly onto Funic, who gets off the Hex to start this on Simba, but Simba just walks away as a... That's a sheep. We'll end up surviving for now. Vanscore using a brain tap. He'll go down first and foremost. And they still chase on Anavi, even with the Aegis. BKB was used by Denny just to dodge an incoming boulder toss. Do they still chase for Cyclone? They're going to back off. They scatter. Secret might just be trying to end the game against an Aegis. And jeez, that's how far ahead they think they are. Let's check the buybacks here. No buyback on the Bane, no buyback on the other Titan. The new change, he would have had it now, actually was short on gold anyway, but the cooldown makes it irrelevant. And Secret will just clean up a second lane of Rax. Who, who cares about Aegis or Cheese? We got Terrorblade! We got Kuro playing it, and that's good enough for us, say Secret. They'll clear out the Aegis to start, now they go for round two. Havos trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with the Terrorblade, but easier said than done. As he's quickly brought down, the Carapace stun will lock Kuroki in position, still at half health. And FNG, well, the gem, will eventually fall to a blink clap. They can probably just go for the throne. They're forcing Navi back to the well. Navi, <laughs> even blasting them out of that damn well with the blinding light of Puppy. This will secure a kill, and probably with it, the game. Nicely played by Puppy, not just for show, but... Oh, the game was most likely over anyway, just rubbing it in. GG, that's your call. 32 to 16, secret. Run away with this game, and it could turn out to be a big one. Navi, outside of this game, still looked pretty solid, likely to be in the running for the playoffs. Secret with this win here improved to 2-0, and and they knocked Navi down a peg to 1-1. and They had a good idea. It was a nice concept with the Elder Titan and Bristle to try and shut down the Terrorblade, but it was just not an adequate solution. They, they have to... <laughs> they need others. Yeah, it's, it's, it was just they didn't hit their time. Me windows quite, quite well enough, I guess. And that's it. Should they have contested Kuro? You brought it up in the draft. Do they should they have gone aggressive with the Bristleback? Would that have made a difference? I think they have to. I think most of the time, Terrorblade first 20 minutes, easy time, easy win. Yeah. So just try and shut them down the first 20. I actually haven't seen it run.